Hello everyone! So, um, ever since the Neo Vim conference last year, I've been receiving a lot of requests of me sharing my debugging configuration. Um, I mentioned how I use the Lua debugger to debug my, my init.lua or um, even when I'm contributing to new features, I will use the debugger to look at the plugins or, or even when I'm debugging Neo Vim itself. And so I will, I'm preparing this video so um, all of you can um, hopefully do something similar. So um, first I'll start with um, showing you how I configure the debugger. Um, this, if I go to my dap.lua file here in my Neovim conf, um, well, first of all, it is always useful to set up the breakpoints um, icons that you want to use. And so, for example, like um, this one, it is the one that I set. Um, you can see over here um, how I have this icon for the breakpoint. And so um, you can set up that for some eye candy. Um, now, if I go to, um, to the Lua configuration itself, you will want the following plugins. So first of all, you want to use um, um, and then DAP. Um, if, if you are not familiar with it, DAP is similar to an LSP. Um, it stands for the Debugger Adapter Protocol and the website even looks very similar to the LSP website. Um, but debuggers can also follow a similar protocol and this is how you can still get a, a very similar debugging experience in VS Code, in LVM, in Visual Studio and you name it. Um, and so that's a nice fact. Um, so that will be the one um, that you will want to install. Um, and the and up UI, um, this will also allow you to see things like as the local variables, um, where you have placed your breakpoints, um, stack traces, among other things that will make this debugging experience quite similar to VS Code if you have used it in the past. Um, Next, I set up the, the, the key bindings that I want to use. And so um, this one, it is for evaluating a specific variable when the debugger is on. I will show these later. Um, and uh, let's see, this is again, just configuring the, the specific windows that I want to open when I turn on the debugger. Um, this one for virtual text, it's really nice. It shows kind of like an only hint at the very end of the line. And so when you're debugging, that can be very useful. Um, and then there's some other plugins depending on the languages that you want to debug. And so um, to figure this out, I mean, just Google it <laughs> um, or, or look on Reddit. Um, I, I, I also have to mention that um, I'm just going to open um, Lazy Vim because, um, in fact, all of this configuration when I first got started, I just adapted it from from what Lazy Vim does. Um, of course, like given that I don't have all of the Lazy Vim infrastructure, I handle my own configuration. Um, you can still use this as a reference of what you would want to use. Um, like using a specific setup. And so um, if you go here and you look at the full spec, it's very, it should be very straightforward for you to just copy paste what Lazy Beam does and go from there. Um, so here I use um, the, the configuration that I use when I'm debugging TypeScript or JavaScript. Um, but I think that the most important and the one that I will try to focus on on this video, it is Lua debugging. So for this, you will want to use the Lua adapter. Um, it is called One Small Step for Vinkind. And um, this particular plugin for um, launching the server, um, you will see how this works um, in a bit. And um, some other more key bindings. Um, this particular of like, um, let me select what I'm referring to. 
that particular um, configuration is something that um, it is documented in the WI um, readme. And so make sure that you, from all of the plugins, you take a look. Um, Overseer, it is a, a plugin from the same um, guy that came up with Conform and um, I'm blanking. Um, the one that you can also use for, oh, dressing. And so he has amazing plugins and Overseer allows you to run pre and post um, debugging tasks, which are often defined in .vs code folders. And so that's really nice when you're working on a code base where the other maintainers or, or people in the team will use VS code and you still want to use the same configuration that they have. And so you can also look at Overseer for, for, for that. And um, the Lua configuration adapter. And so for this one, um, again, this is in one small step for being kind. Um, let me go back here and here in the plugin, um, you will see how the configuration tells you exactly how you want to configure this. And so as always, just read the manual. Um, but there's, I, I cannot really tell you much more of what's um, written here. And so going back to the config, now that we have this, um, let's come up with an example and so, um, let's try to go to, um, let's see, I'm trying to think what would be nice to have here. Um, let's go to mini files. Um, and the reason I, I picked this one is because I have a, this particular function that I use um, for opening files from the t tree explorer in a split like this. And so, Say that I just installed mini files, I'm creating this new function and um, I want to know more about the types of the arguments that I would be handling here. And so um, I would like m to know more about like these particular arguments and the shape of them and um, just make sure that I know what they look like. Um, in this case, mini files always has like great documentation and so you would actually um, be able to know the types, but say that we're dealing with a different plugin, then that's not the case. And so now that um, we have this scenario, I'm going to start by setting up a breakpoint here. Um, and here you can see that um, the key binding that I set is my leader and then D and then B, so toggle breakpoint. And um, now I will open a new tab in my terminal and um, I'll get started by opening now Vim again. And now um, I will open a file that's not currently open in the other now Vim instance. And I'm going to open the, the server. And so leader D, and then you can see here that L, it will launch the Lua adapter. And you will see here that I have a notification saying that the server started listening in the port. And so now that I have the server here listening, going back to the instance that I'm debugging, I'm going to start. And so uh, for that, my key binding is F5. And so you can see that the breakpoint hasn't been hit yet because I haven't um, trigger that code. And so going back here, I'm going to open mini files and you can see that I already, um, that that line is selected. You can see that the icon in here has changed because I'm there. This is what I was referring to with the um, virtual text that it shows kind of like an inline hint showing the values of the variables in that line. And so now that I'm here, um, Let's say that I want to just open another breakpoint there um, and I'm going to continue and continue. And now this, now that when I press control V, which is the key binding that I said in line 23 over here, that should trigger the right hand side function, which is the one that 
in inline 20. It is the, the one that I have as a Zekron's um, breakpoint over here. And so um, control V and here I'm hitting the second breakpoint. Um, let's see that I, I don't know how um, the functions that are available in the mini files API. And so here in the locals window in the debugger, um, you can press enter to expand them and see um, what the variables of that, what that module looks like. Um, you can also look at the stack trace um, here. Um, there doesn't seem to be a very exciting stack trace because I guess that this is just the callback of the key map. So there's not a lot to look at, but say that here I continue, continue, continue. And um, that way you can look at what the code looks like um, in your debugging configuration when you're customizing it or there's a new bug and you want to be a very nice person and have a lot of information when you go to the plugin repo and open the issue, it is amazing when you're able to say, oh, there's a bug and I know how to fix it. And so that's um, a first scenario that I wanted to present. Um, now you can very easily just um, exit that instance and that should automatically close the debugger. Um, and so, okay, um, now, that out of the way. Um, let's say that um, instead of debugging my code or my configuration, I want to debug a plugin. And so if you're using Lazy um, as a package manager, um, I'm not too sure of other package managers, but I imagine that it would be something very similar. Um, Lazy stores your plugins, like the code itself, in local um, share um, let's see, and then um, Lacy, and um, let's see, what's a nice one? Um, I mean, let's go to mini files um, again. And here you can also debug the code that's not yours. And so let's see, um, let's go to like a random, um, function, um, let's see, config, default config, um, mm -hmm. trying to think of like one that won't immediately just um, stop. Um, so, okay, see that something, it's wrong with the, with the mappings that I said that I try to set up a, a, a binding in the plugins configuration and then it doesn't end up being what I expected. And so let's say that I'm going to debug the map, um, which I haven't opened this file before, but briefly it seems to be the one that will set up the key maps based on the plugins configuration. And so again, just as before, you can set up a breakpoint there. Um, and here, opening another instance. In this case, I'm going to um, start the Lua debugger right away before I even start, um, before I even open a buffer, just because um, I have a suspicion that this function will run um, when the plugin is first loaded. And so now if I try to open mini files, indeed, um, here I, I try to open mini files, it's not open yet because it's waiting on the debugger. And so at this point, you can, just as before, look at the values of the locals. Um, here it seems that there are like options for the key map that I'm setting. Um, you can see in this case that we have a more interesting um, stack trace. And so if you want to go up in the stack trace to the function that it's calling uh, map, um, you can go here and press enter, um, I think, or no, let's see, do I have a key map for that? Um, it seems like I don't, wait, I was not ready for this, but okay, I don't want to spend too much time on that, um, this was not pre-recorded, so um, 
but I'm sure that you can configure it to go upwards in the stack trace where I actually think that there's like a adapt, like go back or go forward um, map for that. Um, so yeah, I think that that's um, all that I have and that I wanted to show. Um, I'm just going to remove that breakpoint um, and now you can see that the um, mini files it's open because it's not longer stuck on the on the debugger on the other instance and um, I'm going to be closing this um, and I just want to see if there's anything else interesting here um, to show you all um, well something really nice um, now that I see like a breakpoint condition um, so like say that you want to set up a breakpoint just like to see if um, some code is being hit um, but you don't want to stop every single time and so something really useful that you can set it is um, I don't know this might be very silly but say that we want to set up a breakpoint here and um, you can here say give like a boolean condition indicating when you want to actually hit on that breakpoint and just not continue any every single time and so say that i just want to stop if for some weird reason um, the dab model is nil and so once you do that um, that breakpoint will only be hit under that particular condition so that you don't need to continue pressing continue continue or f5 um, just for that um, like just just for that particular case um, and so in that case you can see that I have that breakpoint there um, I also wanted to show you how you can configure um, the highlights that you want and so here I set it up to be similar to my color theme um, I use a variation of Dracula that I deal with myself um, and um, yeah I think that that's all that I wanted to share for today um, I'll be sharing all of the links in the video when I upload it including my configuration it's all available for all of you to use as a reference and I hope that you enjoyed this um, I'm not a streamer I'm not a, a huge influencer yet and so if I made any mistakes or if you have any feedback I'm more than happy to hear um, and yes happy coding <laughs>